открыто. People have settled the territory of Ukraine since the end of the last glacial period, that is over 10,000 years ago. Historians distinguish various archaeological cultures. The territory of Ukraine was first inhabited by Bukhniester culture. Later, it was replaced by the Kukuteni Tripilian culture. Afterwards, there were cultures of cattlemen, the Yamna, Katakam, Srubna, and other cultures. I look at our ancient ceramics. It was preserved from the times of Tripilia, from the times of Mizin and the Maidanetske settlement, which is approximately 7,000 years old. How deeply our people took root! And I have not the slightest doubt that during this previous seven millennia people has always lived in search of their place. Who am I? Where do I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? This was also true for those ancient Tripilian and Mizin cultures. So already back then, certain cosmogonic ideas about our world were formed. Even then there were ancient wise astronomers, who may not have been called astronomers at that time, but they knew the laws according to which the celestial bodies move and how they move. For ancient people, astronomy and observation of the Sun was very important from a practical point of view. Their life and their survival depended on this. The Bezvodivka Observatory is located at 50 degrees 51 minutes north latitude. In this belt, which is about 50 kilometers wide, there are such famous observatories of the ancient world as Stonehenge, Avebury in Great Britain as well as the Gossek Observatory in Germany. The Bezvodivka Observatory has several components. There is the central point, the workplace of the observer, from which the movements of celestial bodies were observed. At a certain distance from the observer's workplace, there is a circle of near pointers. The Bezvodivka Observatory is also equipped with distant pointers to the northeast, where the sun rises on June 22, at the day of the summer solstice, and also to the northwest, where the sun sets on the same day. If we measure distances from the center to the western pointer to the southern, north and southeast pointers, we can see a clear pattern. Each next segment is two times longer than the previous one. There is also a clear pattern in ratios of 1 to 2 and 1 to 4. I noticed one more regularity in the distances between the mounds, called the golden section, namely the segments are relative to each other as 1 and 618,000 is the golden number. When I researched the perceptions of ancient people about astronomy, my attention was drawn to the bowel of catacomb culture. These bowels are found mainly in graves and in inverted form, upside down. The peculiarity of such a bowel is that it has the shape of an ideal hemisphere, with two holes in the side. Through these holes, people observe the stars, the sun and the moon. Indeed, if we look through the hole from the opposite side, we will see that its diameter is approximately equal to the visual diameter of the sun. And if you look in the hole directly, then the sector that we see through it is 10 visual diameters of the sun. In ancient times, people did not keep a chronology as it is today necessary and accepted. I think that there was no point of reference as we have today, be it Christmas Day or the day the world was created. This is because none of the artifacts that we can see in museums have a date, they have no symbols that can designate or confirm the exact date. People lived from the beginning of a cycle to its completion, and I think that for them it was not so important how many of these cycles there were, seen as a new life. A new agricultural season began with the new year, and this was what was most important for them.
Our ancient worldview was based precisely on celestial motion, and the astronomers, who I mentioned earlier, recorded the shortest night, the longest night, and vernal and autumnal equinox. And in accordance with this, rituals were performed because people wanted to live in harmony with the outside world, so it was necessary to appease those higher forces that ruled this world. In addition, our ancestors, while celebrating their holidays, relied on the seasonality of nature, namely the four natural elements of the world – earth, air, fire and water. The most important element is the cosmic fire, the sun, the water, earth and air. Everything was driven by economic expediency, the family and its prosperity were the heart of existence. This was a year-round cycle that Ukrainian national holidays were based on. If you connect the main solar holidays, graphically arranged in a circle, with straight lines, these holidays are the longest night, birth of the sun, now the birth of Jesus, and Ivana Kupala, the shortest night, and the autumn and vernal equinox. Then we get an equilateral simple cross, a sign of fire, a sign of the sun, a sign of man. In the periods between these holidays, the so-called intermediate but no less important solar holidays were celebrated. In the middle of February it was Kolodii, diametrically opposed to it, sorry for this geometry, which was the holiday of transfiguration, Spas, in mid-August. And across the holiday of Rusali, in the middle of May and in the middle of November, there was a holiday, the name of which is not precisely known. Possibly it was the Feast of Destiny or a celebration of grandfathers. Ethnographers have preserved different information about these days. If you combine them in the same way, you get an equilateral oblique cross symbolizing water, moisture and woman. And why? Because these moments, Kolodi, Rusali, Spas and Destiny Grandfather, symbolize the transition of the state of water in the middle of February in its solid state and in the middle of August in its most gaseous state. But in both instances, there is hope that it will become liquid. On Rusali and on the autumn holiday, water is in its most liquid state, but after Rusali, it soon begins to aerate, and in November it begins to freeze. If you look at the eight-spoked wheel, which is revealed by the central circle of pointers of the Bezvodivka observatory, you can see the symbol of Kolovorod or Svarha, which has eight rays with bent ends. In fact, Kolovorod is a double swastika. Swastika is the common name of such a symbol, and it comes from the Sanskrit word swasti, a wish for happiness. This symbol appeared on the territory of Ukraine many thousands of years ago. We can spot it in the Mizin culture bracelet, which was found in the Chernihiv oblast at the Paleolithic site, which is 15,000 years old. We can also find this symbol in the Trapelian culture. It was widely used in decorating dishes on the painted ceramics of Trapelians.
Of course, in this circle among these eight holidays, perhaps the most solemn was the birth of the sun. But the most optimistic, rich and joyful holiday was of course Ivana Kupala, because it was the triumph of the sun over darkness, the triumph of warmth. And at the same time, the rivers were still full, it was a young, beautiful summer, the sun was high, and at the same time it bathed in the waters of the rivers. In short, this is a description of the holiday of Ivana Kupala as the marriage of heavenly fire and heavenly moisture. Various paraphernalia were made especially for the Ivana Kupala holiday. First of all, I'd like to note, Ivana Kupala was not a village holiday, as it is often celebrated today. It was not a holiday for strangers. It was purely a street holiday for locals, on which around 200 people who knew absolutely everything about each other participated. Anyways, the main paraphernalia of the Ivana Kupala holiday was called Kupailitsa, or alternatively Kupoila or Kupalo, Marena, Marenanka or Sobitka, as it was called in the Zhitomir Oblast. All these terms had the same meaning, the main Kupala attribute. Kupailitsa was in the shape of a tree. The kupalica had the form of Y-shaped log. This log was sometimes as high as 5 meters, but it was definitely 4 meters long. In some parts of Ukraine, the kupalo or kupalica resembled an upright rod braided with flowers. In most of Ukraine, Kupalica, Marinonka, was an ordinary young tree decorated with flowers and girlish wreaths. It is very similar to today's wedding tree, and this is perhaps the most important proof that we are dealing with the wedding rite of fire and water. Otherwise, why do we use these ritual attributes? The fort Kupalice was broken. Sometimes people ask, how come? We just praised and glorified it, and then suddenly it was destroyed. All ancient Ukrainian deities were not only anthropomorphic, that is human-like. Just like humans, they entered into full force, were in the full prime of life, and therefore could ensure the most joy. Then they grew old, and since they were dying, they gradually lost their powers, and people helped them pass away. This was the sacred moment of this rite.